Hello there, I'm Gregory Carlson, and welcome to 1.2 of College Algebra. So in the last section, we learned how to solve different types of equations, and in this section, we're actually going to use those equations to solve real-life problems. And I know that people don't like word problems, and they don't like applications, but they're really important, and I promise that with practice, and as you get higher up in math, you will get better at them. So in the last section, we learned the interest equals the simple interest formula, interest equals principal times rate times time. You should memorize that. Another formula you should memorize is the distance rate formula. And the way I remember it is I remember the word dirt because the formula is distance is equal to rate times time, which kind of looks like the word dirt. So distance equals rate times time. And it's really important to understand that your units for this have to be consistent. So what I mean by that is If your distance is in miles and your time is in hours, then that means your rate is going to be in miles per hour. Or if your distance was feet and your time was seconds, then that means your rate is going to be feet per second. And so it's important that these all be consistent when you use them. So let's use dirt to solve a problem. A marathon runner ran a 26.2 mile marathon. In two hours and 45 minutes, what was the runner's average rate? You see that they give us the distance and the time, and they want to know the rate, so it's obvious we need to use this formula. So let's write the formula down, distance equals rate times time. This should be your first step in doing this, write the formula down. All right, we know that the distance is 26.2, so we'll, we will replace D with 26.2. Times, we, they're asking for the rate, so we don't know what that is, so we'll call it R. Now, what should we plug in for the time? Because we have miles and we want miles per hour, this needs to be in hours, but we have two hours and 45 minutes. And so kind of similar to what we did in this problem where we turned months into years in the interest problem, we're going to do something similar. Two hours and 45 minutes can be written as two and 45 over 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And so this is 45 sixtieths of an hour. And so you'll notice that 45 over 60, that'll reduce to 15 goes into both of them. So that'll reduce to 2 and 3 quarters. And um, you could divide by 15. And it'd be better to think of that as a decimal. So that's 2.75. So 2 hours and 45 minutes is 2.75 hours, or 2 and 3 quarters of an hour. So that's the number we put here. And once we get past there, we see we're just one step away. We just need to divide both sides by 2.75. So those cancel, and let's grab our calculator and do that. So 26.2 divided by 2.75 equals all around that to 9.53. So R is equal to 9.527272. And so we'll round that to 9.53. And that R is approximately 9.53 miles per hour. Pretty fast for that amount of time. So apart from the timing on that one, that problem was pretty straightforward. Let's do one that's slightly harder. When Fritz drives to work, his trip takes 30 minutes. But when he takes the train, it takes 20 minutes. So as I read that, I think, okay, the train is faster than the car. Find the distance it takes Fritz to get to work if the train travels an average of 12 miles per hour faster than his driving. Assume that the train travels the same distance as the car. The reason this problem is a little more complicated is we actually have two dirt formulas. We have distance equals rate times time of the car and so that's where I write these little C's to represent car. And we have distance equals rate times time of the train. So we have two distance rate time formulas going on here. And if you remember from a previous class, I hope, this is too many variables. We can't solve for this right now because there's just too many unknowns. However, here's the key. Assume that the train travels the same distance as the car. Well, if the distances are the same, that means that DC is equal to DT because the distance is the same for the car and the train. And so what that means is that if this equals this, 
then this piece equals this piece. Or in other words, if DC equals DT, then that means the rate time of the car will equal the rate time of the train, and I've gotten rid of D altogether. So hopefully that makes sense. Because DC equals DT, RCTC equals RTTT. We still have too many variables, though. So what are we going to do? Well, and then notice that it says that it says the train travels 12 miles per hour faster than his driving. So the rate of the train is faster than the rate of the car. So here's how I do that. I go ahead and set them equal to each other. Even though I know that's not true. I write RT, the rate of the train, equals the rate of the car, but I know that's not true. So let's make this equal. It says the train is 12 miles per hour faster than the car. So this one is 12 bigger than this one. So for example, if the rate of the car was, say, 8, then that means the rate of the train would be 20. So how do we make this equation equal? Well, you can either add to the weaker side or subtract from the stronger side. So I would add 12 right here because, as I said, the train is 12 faster. So if the car was 8, 8 plus 12 would be 20. So now that I know that the rate of the train is equal to RC plus 12, I can substitute this amount into that variable right here. I can substitute RC plus 12 and trade it out for RT because they're equal to each other. They're the same amount. So now here's what my new equation looks like. RC TC is equal to parenthesis RC plus 12 times TT, the rate of the train. So I've replaced RT with RC plus 12 and everything else stays the same. We're actually almost there because now I just have the time of the train and the car and we see that they tell us that takes 30 minutes and the train takes 20 minutes. So let's replace the um, time for the train and the time for the, the time for the train and car. So that's going to be this. The rate of the car times the time of the car, which is 30 divided by 60 is equal to RC plus 12 times the rate of the train, which would be 20 over 60. So see how I did that. Once again, I had to put this in terms of hours, and so the car is half an hour, and the train is a third of an hour. So I just went from here to here. TC became 30 over 60, and TT became 20 over 60 because I needed to put that into hours. So let's simplify this a bit. That 30 divided by 60 is the fraction a half. So I have a half times RC equals. This fraction right here is a third because 20 goes into 20 once and it goes into 63 times. So let's actually do the distributive property with one third. So one third times RC is one third RC. One third times 12 is the same thing as 12 divided by three, which is four. And you can see that we're getting there. We have one variable, one equation. Now we can solve this. So let's do that. I have fractions, 2 and 3. So let's multiply by the least common multiple, which is a 6. From here, hopefully, you're on autopilot. So we're going to multiply everything in the equation by 6. So 6 times a half is 3. 6 times a third is 2. And 6 times 4 is 24. So I have 3RC equals 2RC plus 24. Almost home. Let's subtract 2RC to get everything on one side. So I have 3 minus 2, which equals 1, or just 1RC, equals 24. So we just figured out the rate of the car right there. And so you might be thinking, hooray, we're done. We found a number. But we have one more step to go, because what was the question asking for? It said find the distance, but luckily we know how to do that. So I know the rate of the car, and I know that the time the car drove, which we knew was, remember, was a half. And so because I know that distance equals rate times time of the car, because I know distance equals rate times time, that's the distance is going to equal, and we figured out our rate was 24. 
and our time was 30 over 60 just like before which as you know that reduces to a half so it's 24 times a half and so the distance is equal to 12 miles and that's about as hard as they get um, this is my way of solving this problem I like it because it's good to know how to do these kind of complex substitutions. You should practice this problem until you can understand the logic behind it in, a just, in addition to just doing the steps. But just to recap, the distances were the same, so we set RCTC equal to RTTT. Then we use this comparison of the rates to get all of the rates to be RC. The times were just numbers that we could plug in, and remember to plug them so that they're in terms of hours. And then once you get past all of that, then it's just solving it and then finally getting the distance. So hopefully all of that makes sense. It does take some practice, but you will get it, and I will see you in part two.